Hey everybody, it's Logan here from Red Bandana Gaming. Um, today I'm responding to a couple of questions, a few questions that I had after posting my game room video. People are asking me about my Nintendo 64 collection. So when it came to what I had here, uh, I just recently posted, depending on when you're watching this, a picture of my N64 controllers in a chair because I took everything down. And I don't know if you can see it here. I took a lot of the things down. Um, here, let me... There you go. Let's see them. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's... Yeah. But, sorry about all that. Um, I decided to clean the shelves, add a couple more because I got a few more games. And... Um, I decided to change things up a little bit so I got a couple questions about what games I had because uh, they could only see a couple here and there well I'm gonna show you guys what I got I got a couple of gems I got a couple of ones that um, mean stuff to me maybe not to everybody but they meant stuff to me I'm still working on fleshing out this collection um, I've been picking up a few more Switch games than anything lately, and it's kind of helped me back from buying as much N N64. N64, there you go, N um, Nintendo 64. But I have been gathering a few more to try to complete um, the collection, but hey, let's take a look. So, uh, we got the light up here, and it's kind of... It, 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 it's hard to get so many of these... Uh, uh, games that aren't reflected because of the, the plastic cases I use but as you can see these are the kind of cases we'll just grab Duke Nukem Zero Hour for example this is whoa these are the cases I buy I usually get them from Amazon um, I got a number of them from a place called Gamers Inc in Orlando Florida so these are the cases I use I print up my artwork for each of them and then the games see I recently bought the um, the end labels off of eBay now what's funny is I just recently I'm sorry I'm trying to do this with one hand um, I bought them on eBay turns out the guy who I bought them from on eBay is not just local he is also well known by people that I know and by the guy who runs the retro shop that I go to quite a bit. Uh, kind of small world. But if you guys take a look at my collection, I do have everything alphabetized. Certain ones like this, just because uh, my printer decided to take a little poopsie on me and it doesn't like to print uh, blue as of right now. You'll see that with some of the other cases. So until I buy a new printer, or we're actually taking the one... Um, from uh, my office that I have in downtown Miami uh, we haven't been using it as much and especially with everything going on we're kind of working from home so we're just like you know what we don't really need it down there we'll just take the other one for example you see like our Marines because it's mainly black but the end is a little weird when it came to the printing uh, my cruising same thing there you go and that's what was happening with those um, I got Cruisin' World, I'm missing Cruisin' Exotica, so it's not too expensive, but it's just, I haven't been able to find, I found a copy of it, but the label was kind of, pfft, uh, which means a little pooey. This one, I never knew existed when I was young, Earthworm Jim 3D, and I found it, and if I'm not mistaken, it's one of the yellow cartridges, there you go, so you can see it on there, um, ECW Hardcore Revolution was made by Acclaim after they lost the WWF uh, license back in the day and this was the last wrestling game that um, I needed to complete the N64 uh, wrestling collection. Extreme G2, I'm looking for that one. Uh, what happened was, and you're going to see this, I got a lot of sports games. <laughs> Not because I chose to get the sports games first, like the Fox Sports, whatever. You'll see more. I did it because uh, I went to uh, a retro store that's south Miami, so far south. But the guy gave me such a good deal. He gave me 
the games for about two bucks a piece. And so I bought a ton of sports games for two bucks a piece. He originally said 250, but as many as, as I bought, he dropped it down to two, and I bought a number of the, the plastic cases from him too. So got Gauntlet Legends. As you can see, it's it's purple. It was another casualty of war, as you can see the blue. Um, that one, when I bought it, it was it had spiked to a fifty dollar price tag for some reason, but I got for twenty four, and recently it, it went back down. Gex Glover, that. Now this isn't my main sixty four. I was one one of the fantastic ones. I was looking for the blue one uh, or the the green one, but I found the orange. And for some reason, recently, I've uh, had a thing for orange. I don't know why I've never been a fan of orange, but I got that one. And I like it. Now, my regular one hooked up is a uh, classic black slash gray. Now, recently, I did get the Admiral controller. Uh, wireless, I tried it out. It's actually pretty good. I'm just not a big fan of the stick here. Um, I was playing, I think I was playing Two Rock with it, just to give it a shot because I wanted to see what it played like there. I played a couple of other games like the WCW ones. Not N64, but my NES. Whee! All right, next shelf. Whoa, almost killed myself there. Don't don't kill yourself, it's bad. It's bad, I'm going. Um, Hexen, as you can see, same thing. Hexen, the story behind Hexen, uh, you know, some people are like, oh, that game came out on the 64. It was one of the first games I got on the 64. And... It actually scared the crap out of me because I was young. I was like, whoa, this is scary, but it was, I enjoyed it and I kept playing it. Um, Hybrid Heaven, we got Hydro Thunder. Man, I tell you what, Hydro Thunder is one of my favorite games. Uh, it's racing, again, but boats, oh, so much fun. I had it on the Dreamcast eventually, and I have the uh, re-release on the 360, which I still play today. Fantastic game, one of my favorites. This game, Indie Racing 2000, I didn't even know existed. I found it at, uh, you know, the retro game store. It's actually called CD Trader uh, here in uh, Broward County. Um, I went and got it. And I was like, oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, he's like, yeah, it's a thing. I think it was like five or six bucks. Um, we got Jet Force Gemini, Ken Griffey Jr. Now, Killer Instant Gold. Killer Instant Gold, I purchased this because I never had it when I was young. I had it on the... Um, Super Nintendo, and this was again another casualty of the printer. Let's see, sorry. Let's see if I can. Uh, I, I guess it doesn't want to. There you go. Let's see how it's. Yeah. So, um, I got this and it wasn't working on my 64, and I was like, Oh no, what's going on? What's going on? So I took it back to um, the CD trader. His name's Geo. Awesome guy. Thumbs up to him. If uh, I can find it, I'll link him link him below if you're down the area go check him out um it wasn't working and i couldn't get it to work took it in he goes oh that's not good and I, I buy quite a bit from him and he's really awesome guy really kind of guy so he's like let me test it out, uh, check it out he puts it in the 64 starts up right away i spent about two hours trying to get it to work and he's like uh, 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 uh and i didn't know what to say i was I took it home, didn't work. Turns out it was my power adapter. It wasn't giving enough power to power any of the games. And I didn't think, because I was dumb, um, I didn't think to try any other game. And that's all I wanted to play. So that was before I got that orange. But now it works, everything's fine. Now the Kobe Bryant, you know, God rest his soul, you know, it shouldn't have happened, but hey, things happen. I do have two copies of it. Um, this, unfortunately, the it's not the PAL version, but the uh, site that I get the, the artwork from, they don't have the US one. So, and then I got a regular one. Now, you see, oh, two copies of Ocarina. One's gold, one's gray. And then the Majora's Mask. Again, sadly, another casualty of the printer but hey it is gold with uh the hollow cover and i did put the thing on the top so um when i was young that's the one i had so i wanted to get it again even though yeah people are gonna hate me for this i don't think majora's mask was that good at all it was the one that i liked there we go sorry it was the one that i liked the least out of all the legend of zelda games 
besides Wind Waker. Yeah, I know. Okay, hate, hate me. It's okay. I'll, I'll I'll take the hate for those, but not not my faves. So, and like I said, uh, I do have the sports. And yes, Ocarina of Time is my favorite. Um, Madden 64, Madden 2000. Why? Because they were cheap. MLB, which is actually Major League Baseball featuring Ken Griffey Jr. I wasn't going to print that out and have the whole thing there. Um, this is one of the few that I just recently got because I was surprised I didn't have it. I have uh, all the Ken Griffey Jr. games. One of my favorite players growing up, even though he was on uh, the Mariners and I was a Marlins fan. Um, Mission Impossible, awful, but fun. It was one of those games I didn't realize how bad it was uh, until many years later. Uh, rented this and ended up buying it when I was young. Mortal Kombat 4. Monopoly? Eh. Mortal Kombat 4, I really liked it. I was actually really good in the arcade. Um, you know, people talk crap about it. Mortal Kombat Trilogy was technically my first Nintendo 64 game. Uh, my mom's boyfriend at the time, he bought it for me for my birthday because... He bought me this in a controller. This isn't the original copy, unfortunately. But he bought me this in a controller. The game was $80 at Service Merchandise. Hey, if you guys remember Service Merchandise, whoo, to you. Uh, controller, my mom got me the, the, the console. Uh, but that was expensive, man. But I played the crap out of that. Uh, MRC, decent racing game. Uh, I used to rent this quite a bit. Mystical Ninja Star and Go Mon. One I never had, but I rented the crap out of this. Love this. For 20 plus years, that theme song was stuck in my head. We even have a uh, the theme song video of it. I'll put the little thing right up here. Uh, Blitz, the best, the best football game of all time. Yes, I said it, the best. Uh, never was into sports video games. Um, yeah, just because didn't really care. But Blitz, man, I played the crap out of Blitz because they mixed wrestling with it, and that was just fun. It made football fun. Sorry. I'm a Dolphins fan, but hey, video games, not so much. And yeah, the, we're going Super Nintendo and Super Famicom, but hey, that's not what we're doing today. Next. Oh, you'll see, got my, my DS, 3DS, and this is, again, NFL, NHL, hockey. Oh my god, I loved Paperboy on the Super Nintendo. This was awful. 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 Perfect Dark, loved it. We had a lot of great memories. How did I skip the GoldenEye? Did I skip GoldenEye? Oh, one of the greatest games in the world. One of the greatest games on the Nintendo 64, and my friends and I would play the crap out of GoldenEye. And when Perfect Dark came out, I had to get the expansion back so we could play the crap out of that. Pilot Wings, well, we all know that. Pokemon Stadium, <laughs> gems. These apparently have gone up in price. I got them at, I think I got Pokemon Stadium at 30 and Stadium 2 at 40. Last time I checked, this was sitting closer to 50-ish. This is sitting closer to 40-ish. Not sure why. I do have to transfer back. Uh, Power Rangers. I'm a huge Power Rangers fan, and this was Doodle Butter. Uh, Ridge Racer. Loved it on the PS1, and then when this came out, I had to get it. Road Rash. Road Rash was great. I played it at my cousin's house in West Virginia on the Genesis. I was like, oh, man, this is so much fun. Then I got it on the PlayStation, the 64 version, you know. San Francisco Rush. Now, oof, me and my friends have so many memories of playing San Francisco Rush. We just, we would race and crash into each other. Uh, man. And it was the first one. I, I know there was Rush 2049, which was pretty good, and Rush 2. Um, I remember I got San Francisco Rush on the PlayStation. I, I swear that's not the game that's outside somebody's thing think it's a motorcycle um this i got on the playstation because i saw it like dirt cheap at walmart it was like 10 bucks or something like that and i got it and i was like oh my god it's so bad compared to the 64 version so eventually i got 64 um shadow man never played at starcraft this one is a pretty expensive game from my understanding um i've never played starcraft ever but I know it's an RTS and I've played Halo Wars and this one's just, you know, just a half. Star Fox, one of the most, again, most played games in the collection. Me and my friends, phew, hours and hours and days and days in Star Fox. Star Wars Episode One Racer, loved it because it's racing and it's Star Wars and it's pod racing, come on. Rogue Squadron, I liked part... Th 
Whatever the one on the GameCube one, was that considered two? Yeah, that was considered two. This was Shadows of the Empire, one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, not just because it was one of my, I wouldn't say one of the earlier uh, Nintendo 64 games, but when I got this, I got this along with Diddy Kong Racing for Christmas that year. This is the game that got me into Star Wars. In my household growing up, my mom was a big um, Star Trek fan, so I was always into Star Trek. But um, what happened was um, she misinterpreted something I said because Diddy Kong Racing had just come out and I really wanted it. But I told her she didn't have to get it for me because it was really expensive. And we, we were going through some tough times at, at the moment. So she returned it thinking I didn't want it and got me this instead and then we had a conversation she was like crap he really does want it so instead of returning this uh she kept it and then bought me the game the other game too and i was that, that was all i got for christmas that year but i was uh, i was beyond happy i was super happy on like the next game which is superman which check the video out we, we do have it and i hate it <laughs> and superman's one of my favorites now turok i'm a huge turok fan Love dinosaurs, love uh, Turok Dinosaur Hunter. I have comics, I have everything, you name it. And Turok was one of the first games for the Nintendo 64 that I bought on my own. Uh, saving my money up to, to get it. It had just gone to a um, uh, one of the best sellers, greatest hits. No, it was greatest hits. Um, million sellers. So I bought that. And, and when Turok 2 came out, uh, I, I think I got that around my birthday. And 3 and 4 I, I, I didn't get into. But uh, I, I think I had rented three, and it wasn't. I, I wasn't a big fan of it as as one and two, one and two were fantastic. Oh, and this was one of the other games that I just recently picked up because I didn't have it, and it was six bucks. Next. Oh, sorry, that's me going down further with the camera sitting on the floorish. Now, um, yeah, I bought that because it's dirt cheap. Same thing with that. Or whoops those were these i'm gonna i'm gonna put those back there i'm gonna interesting video Ig ignore all this i'm not gonna edit this out <laughs> that's fine there we go war gods uh me and my friends we love fighting games uh one of my best friends growing up he bought this and i went over to his house and um it was awful but we kept playing it, it had fatalities it was it was like a, a sad 3D Mortal Kombat ripoff. It was just awful, but he swore it was good. He's like, oh, no, it's great. I was like, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> but then again, I did the same thing with the next game. These two. This one was terrible, even compared to this one. It just they, they took a step back. I mean, it just it just got worse. Uh, a big WCW, big wrestling guy. And like I said, with ECW was the last one. I think these were still better than the, the WWF wrestling games. Uh, by a claim, those were just terrible. And at least these were easier to play. Um, yeah, I'm gonna knock over my stuff. Um, and then Nitro, I had that on PlayStation One, and I got it on uh, 64. God knows why it's not that good. But these two, these two, the greatest wrestling game of all time, WCW NW Revenge, and it all started with WCW. Versus the NWO World Tour. Yes, there was WCW versus the World, but it didn't play as well. But it ran on the same engine. But this game, greatest wrestling game of all time. Uh, Winback. Winback started the cover shooter um, genre, I guess you could say. I bought that uh, because I had played it way back in the day. And I had uh, rented it from Blockbuster. As you can see, I rented a lot of games from Blockbuster. Um, and I enjoyed it. So I always wanted to have it back in the collection. I know they later re-released it on PS2, but this is my version. Uh, the WWF games, of course, and No Mercy, WrestleMania after uh, WCW uh, lost its license. Uh, THQ lost the WCW license. They went to WWF, and then we got the WrestleMania 2000, which was great. No Mercy, which was supposedly the pinnacle. I think it is one of the best, but to me, it all really took shape in, in Revenge. And I was a bigger WCW guy, but No Mercy, fantastic. Now, these over here, they're not technically advertised like the other ones, because um, these are 
boxed games. I still have these in box, and I buy the little plastics. Oh, the Yoshi! Um, one of my favorite games, Mace the Dark Age. I played that in the arcade. Um, played it on the 64. Loved it. It was it was a great 3D fighter. Um, I had I had Mace the Dark Age, and uh, my friend had uh, War Gods, and he was like, "No, War Gods is better." I was like, "No, Mace the Dark Age is better." Mace the Dark Age is better. Quake 2, Quest 64, it's awful. Rainbow 6. And yes, I have a second copy of San Francisco Rush because it's in the box. Mario 64, posted that on Mario Day, March 10, March 10. Yes, yes, and that is my Game Boy Micro Famicom Edition. Uh, more box games, got Xena recently. This one, The World Is Not Enough, I remember playing it back in the day. It was no GoldenEye, but it was actually pretty fun. Uh, N64 expansion pack. Wayne Gretzky Top Gear Rally. It was a little damaged, so I think I got this for like 15 bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. Tetrisphere, and then the box for my N64 Rumble Pack, which I actually just bought the box by itself because uh, I was buying it at a retro store in Port St. Lucie here in Florida. And I was going to get the Rumble Pack and everything, but he opened it up and there was corrosion in the battery slot. Mm, excuse me. So he's like, oh, all right, I'll sell you the box. Bought the box for 10 bucks. Yeah, whatever. Now these, there's more in the back, but these are my Japanese games. I have Japanese, Animal Forest, which is Animal Crossing, Mystical Ninja Star, Gomon, of course, Japanese, Ogre Battle 64. If someone can find me or help me get this for English copy, I'd be, oh, Oh, so ever grateful. <laughs> and again, Star Wars Episode One Racer, Japanese, which I bought this not realizing it was Japanese, and I could play it, and then I looked at the back. Little things were, little thingy things, whatever they're called, were clipped off to make them play, but whatever. Then I have a couple of repros. Animal Crossing, don't know how well you can see that. Animal Crossing for the Nintendo 64. It was a fan translation of the um, of Animal Force. So, this one, Dragon Ball Kart. Dragon Ball Kart. It's a mod of um, of Mario Kart 64. So, that's fun. And then, of course, Star Wars: Shadows of the Empire. Japanese. Don't know why they put Boba Fett on there when they could have put Dash Rendar, but hey. So. Those are the games. Here, let me slowly take you. Let me get up. I'm getting old. Sorry, but most of you expect that. All right. Like I said, let's move that. The pop I just bought. All right. As you can see, I was I was dusting controllers and took everything off. Um. Yeah, these are my N64 controllers. I I've been getting some crap on Instagram when I post the the retro bit ones. Uh, instead of the actual horror ones, but I'm sorry, I'm not going to pay a hundred something bucks for a controller um, for the 64. This one I had. This isn't the original one, but I, I found it later on at uh, a, a store called Cybertron in in Sanford, Stewart, Sanford. Can't remember. Um, in Flor in northern Florida, north of Orlando, and this is one of the ones that I bought when I was a kid. I had the blue and the green one when I was young. And this is the one I'd make my friends play with because they were like 15 bucks. And that's how we'd have four players. But I, I like that controller. Third party, they're the ones that you hear about that are the ones they are not officially licensed. You see them on Amazon and whatnot. They're not that fantastic, but they're great when you need an extra one. But I have plenty of controllers. The best N64 controller. Retro Fighters, thank you guys for making this. This is fantastic. I bought it from them. I even did a video. And then more of the retro bit. Atomic Purple, Atomic Purple. Got the orange that came with the console. And then another retro bit. So those are the controllers. So yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Um, that was a little tour through my Nintendo 64 collection to answer a couple of your questions and so on but thank you guys so much um yeah if you have any other questions about the the super nintendo which i have more over there and over there and or maybe my super famicoms or whatever let me know and i'll do a little video on that but 
like we always say, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Head on over to redbandanagaming.com for all your goodness. And uh, follow us on our socials at Red Bandana Gaming, Twitter at RBG underscore Retro. And um, yeah, subscribe, like, thank you so much. Like we always say, be legendary. Thanks again.